In Good Shape, your weekly dose of health information on DWTV. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio every week to offer their expert advice on In Good Shape. I'm now joined by Dr. Joseph Zacher, senior consultant at the Helios Clinic here in Berlin and also an expert on osteoarthritis. Dr. Zacher, what are the main causes of osteoarthritis, of joint wear? Joint wear is mostly uh, in patients with overweight, with malformations or after sport injuries if the joint is directly damaged. And are some people more at risk than others? especially overweight patients or mm. some occupational things uh, like people working hard uh, and or long distance runners are also people who can suffer from osteoarthritis. Why are the hips so often affected? At the hip joint, most, uh, the most important reason is malformation and at the end also overweight. Mm. When do you think uh, should one seek medical advice? At what point? If you have pain in your hip joint, going down to the knee, more than three to four weeks. Uh, and if you are at the age over 45 years, then it's a very common diagnosis that you are suffering from osteoarthritis. And you were mentioning runners as one of the people who are um, at risk of... of long distance long runners. Distance long runners. distance runners with more than <laughs> 100 or 120 kilometers a week. Okay. That's interesting because uh, one of our viewers, Larissa from Kiev, wrote in and she says a lot of therapists recommend exercise. So how can that be helpful? Exercise is very important, but we mean exercise without overloading the joint. That's very important. And exercise is a training uh, thing and is also very important for the cartilage uh, and the turnover of cartilage. Mm. Apart from an operation, how can we relieve the strain on our joints as a preventive measure? Mostly in doing these things we mentioned, exercises, lifestyle changes, uh, preventing overweight, and at the end, of course, uh, if you have consistent pain, then you should think about drugs. Mm. What kind of drugs? It's painkillers, mm. uh, NSAIDs, non-steroidal uh, drugs. They uh, are able to improve the pain situation and restore function. That's very important in osteoarthritis. Mm. Can there be an addiction in the long run as well? Is there a threat Not there? these type of pain, mm. painkillers. That's very important. Addiction is no problem with these type of painkillers. Mm. Is it actually possible to stop uh, osteoarthritis altogether? Unfortunately, it's really to say no, you never can stop osteoarthritis. If the cartilage breakdown has started, there's only one way down. But the time course of the way down, this is very important and it may be that you can slow it down uh, to a very long extent that it takes years that there is a worsening of the osteoarthritis. Mm. How uh, difficult is it to make a diagnosis? At, at the end, it's not too difficult the age, the symptoms, and the loss of function or the impairment of function and an X-ray is usually enough. You don't need uh, surgical procedures like an arthroscopy to look into the joint to diagnose an osteoarthritis. Mm -hmm. And what are usually the symptoms? When the symptoms I... mm -hmm. are pain if you start movement in the early stages and phases of osteoarthritis. Later on, you have a persistent pain, especially night pain. And that's what uh, is really difficult for the patients, the sleep disturbance by night pain. The mere thought of having your hip replaced can be terrifying for people affected. And some actually prefer to seek the help of a surgeon or an orthopedic specialist. I've also heard about a different method where cartilage cell is, um, is transplanted to relieve the strain of the joint. What's your view on that? That's a, also a very interesting method because it's a good idea if you say you have a cartilage problem and a breakdown of cartilage, then take normal cartilage cell, you take it usually out of the knee joint, let it grow uh, and then transplant it back uh, into the joint. But it's to say it only works in small areas of joint destruction, usually after an injury, it doesn't work in osteoarthritis. Isn't it even possible to, um, to grow new cells from body's own cartilage? Yeah, you usually take your own cartilage cells mm -hmm. and you can grow them in a chamber and put it into a matrix and then put it back into the joint. It's a very interesting method. Uh, it works now very good. Uh, 
but only usually in sport injuries and in uh, circumscript areas of cartilage damage. And when does it make sense to have a, a, a joint replacement? That's also a good, very good question because we don't have a real algorithm at the moment which patients are the right ones for a total hip replacement or a total joint replacement. What we usually think is that you need an X-ray, you need your symptoms, bad symptoms, and what we always say, if your uh, symptoms are too hard that you cannot stand it anymore, then you should think about a joint replacement. How long would it take for the patient to recover from this operation? Joint replacement and the recovery is very, very fast. Usually the patients are able to go out of their bed on the next day and walk on crutches. Uh, and after one week, they can do regular walks already. And I usually say after three months, there is a good uh, end result already achieved. And how long does the prosthesis last? That's also a very good question. Usually it's said uh, 10 to 15 years. That's wrong because we have uh, a rate of revision surgeries per year. And if you look for total hips, it's about half to 1%. And in the knees, it's about 0.7 to 1% a year revision. This means after 10 years, 95 or 90% of the prosthesis are still in good function. Dr. Zacher, thank you very much for joining us today on In Good Shape. <laughs>